All right, guys, help me out here. A few months ago, I did a video talking about how in Suicide Squad, Jared Leto's Joker is in fact Jason Todd, the second Robin. Now, in that video, I made it clear that my opinion on this theory is that it's flimsy and, to use an old-timey term, hogwash. But many of you guys made it clear to me that you think this theory could be true, that Jared Leto could actually be playing Jason Todd. Some of you aggressively made this clear to me. So I've decided to revisit this topic, go over all the evidence I can find, and try to figure out, once and for all, what's going on here. <laughs> Now, I should mention right off the bat that there will be spoilers in this episode. We're mostly going to be talking about a theory, but I will mention story beats from Batman vs. Superman, the Dark Knight trilogy, the comics, Batman Arkham Knight, and who knows, this might actually wind up being true in Suicide Squad, so consider this your warning. Once again, for those of you who don't know, Jason Todd was the second person to become Robin after the original Robin, Dick Grayson, quit. In the story, Death in the Family, Joker beats him with a crowbar and then blows up the building he's in, killing him. He eventually comes back to life because comics and becomes the vigilante Red Hood, basically the Punisher, but with a red mask. Now this is from the comics, which is considered the source material. And when Jason Todd's story has been adapted into other mediums, they pretty much kept the same basic ideas, but have made some changes, some small, some drastic. Now, according to this particular fan theory, which has been around for a surprisingly long time, it is believed that in Suicide Squad, Jared Leto is not playing the Joker we know, but is in fact playing a resurrected Jason Todd, and instead of becoming the Red Hood, he becomes the Clown Prince of Crime. Now, nobody involved in the making of Suicide Squad, or the making of Batman vs Superman for that matter, have ever said that Jared Leto's Joker is Jason Todd. The most we've ever gotten was a quote from Zack Snyder, the director of Batman vs Superman. According to him, Robin died about 10 years before the events of Batman vs Superman, and I quote, during some run-in with a young Joker. So this reinforces two things we definitely know. In the DC Cinematic Universe, which so far consists of two movies, Batman had a sidekick named Robin, and he was killed by the Joker. Now Suicide Squad comes out on August 5th of this year, and between now and then, we don't know if any new information is going to be released. But if you ask me, the quote from Zack Snyder should be it. Someone who's involved in the making of these movies is pretty much confirming that yes, Robin was killed by the Joker, just like it was in the comics. But I know that's not good enough for some people. I know some people just want to believe that there's more to Jared Leto's Joker than him just being the Joker. But why? Why do people think there's more to this story? Well, let's look at the evidence. Now in my previous video, I mentioned how the damaged Robin costume has two little bullet holes, one on each shoulder and that the first released picture of Jared Leto as the Joker has what appear to be two bruises in similar spots. This seems to be the big one, the one everybody points to when they start talking about this theory. But I didn't buy it then, and I don't buy it now. This can't be anything more than a coincidence, especially since there are other bullet holes in the Robin costume, and there don't seem to be any more corresponding marks on the Joker's body. But a lot of you guys not only think that that's plausible, but that there's more evidence than just that. Another big one seems to be Bruce's line from Batman vs Superman, the one where he says to Alfred, 20 years in Gotham, how many good guys are left? How many stayed that way? I haven't perfected my Affleck yet. Now, yes, this could very well be referring to the fact that his former sidekick became the new Joker. But this could also be referring to the fact that District Attorney Harvey Dent became Two-Face, that his childhood friend Tommy Elliot became Hush, that a respected psychiatrist became Harley Quinn. You get the idea, there are already plenty of characters in the Batman mythos who started out good but became corrupt due to what's going on in Gotham. So I'm not buying that either. What else is there? What about the tattoos? The Joker doesn't normally have tattoos, so maybe they offer a clue. Let me just get this out of the way. The J on his face probably just stands for Joker. I know in Arkham Knight, Jason Todd had a J on his face, but that's the only piece of media where Jason Todd had a J on his face, and I really don't think that the makers of Suicide Squad were eyeing what Rocksteady was doing at any point in development. Also, this movie started production before the game came out, so I really don't think they're taking any inspiration from it. What about his other tattoos? Well, on his right arm, there's what looks like a bird wing. Maybe that stands for Robin. Maybe the damage on his forehead means that he was a damaged good guy. Okay, 
But then why give Harley Quinn tattoos? Do they mean something? Do they mean that she was a former Batgirl who became rotten? Lastly, and this seems to be the most valid of the theories, in the, all the trailers for Suicide Squad that have been released, you never see the Joker with another member of the team. You always either see him with Harley, with his own team, or with Batman when he's on the roof of his car. The theory goes that because you don't see him with any other members of the team, that those scenes must be flashbacks taking place when Harley Quinn first became Harley Quinn and right after he just killed Robin. And as we've seen in Batman vs Superman, this is a universe where Batman clearly doesn't have a problem with killing people. So it stands to reason that if the Joker did kill Jason Todd, then he's probably not going to be alive for much longer. Batman is going to viciously murder him. So yes, this sounds very plausible. And as of right now, I don't really have a comeback for it. However, I must ask, especially to those who think Jared Leto's Joker might be Jason Todd, is this what you want? Seriously, comic fans are a very fickle bunch. We don't like when things change this drastically. Remember when we thought the Ninja Turtles were going to be aliens or that Doctor Doom was going to be a blogger? Do you remember how mad we were at that? You don't have to look any further than the reaction to the new Ghostbusters movie to see how poorly fans react to change. Even change that in the end seems superficial and insignificant. So why are people so willing to accept the fact that this may in fact be Jason Todd as the Joker? Well, I think I have an idea about that. Now, before Batman vs Superman came out, there was another fan theory going around, this time focused on Ben Affleck's Batman. Now, this fan theory suggests that the current DC Cinematic Universe takes place in the same universe as Christopher Nolan's Dark Knight trilogy, and that Ben Affleck isn't playing Bruce Wayne, but rather he's playing Slade Wilson, aka Deathstroke the Terminator, and that Joseph Gordon-Levitt's character from Dark Knight Rises, Robin John Blake, doesn't become Batman, but rather goes crazy and becomes a new Joker. Now, if you've seen Batman vs Superman, or you've talked to anybody who's seen it, or you've read anything about it, then you know that this just isn't true. This has no connection to Christopher Nolan's trilogy. So then why do people think it did? Well, I think it's because they can't accept the fact that Ben Affleck is playing Bruce Wayne Batman. It doesn't matter how good his performance was, people just don't want to see Batfleck, so they will come up with any reason they can to believe that this is not the real Batman. Similarly, I think people are really holding on to this Jason Todd Joker theory because this doesn't look like the Joker. This looks like a Juggalo. We all know the Joker. We all know what he looks like. He doesn't have tattoos or Flava Flav style teeth or muscles. This can't be it. This can't be the real Joker. This has to be somebody else. And you know what? Part of me gets that. But, to be honest, I'm on the flip side of this coin. Because if you make him somebody else, if you make him Jason Todd or Dick Grayson or Martha Wayne or whoever, then it's not the Joker. It's a completely different character. And I don't want that. I want the Joker. But really, who the f*** knows? We're not going to know for sure until Suicide Squad comes out in August. So until then, all we really have are our theories, no matter how out there they could be. So what the hell, let's speculate. Talk to me down below or anywhere on the internet of some of your favorite crazy fan theories, not just for the DC Cinematic Universe, but for all movies in general. Let's go nuts, why not? And as always guys, like if you like, subscribe if you really like, share this video with a friend. Thank you so much for watching. I will see you next time. For example, when Jenna Malone was cast in Batman vs Superman, almost immediately everybody thought she was going to be playing Robin. Now personally, I didn't buy it, but I still thought it made sense. Zack Snyder is an admitted fan of Dark Knight Returns, and Jenna Malone can make a good Carrie Kelly. See, books like Swamp Thing, Sandman, Animal Man, and Hellblazer were all technically in the DC Universe, but featured a lot of sex, violence, and naughty language that kept it out of the target demographic. 